All right, so hello there. This is the video of how to do calibration plot like for the homework, but with MATLAB this time. Um, maybe you've watched the Excel video, uh, maybe you haven't. So um, the, the starting point here is with data like this that is pretty easy to see in Excel. So we've got um, the true temperature. So this was the input to our our calibration experiment. Um, we started at 5 degrees and measured the voltage, then 10, measured the voltage, and so forth, up to 40. Then it decreases, and then we start over and start over and start over. So each thing gets measured five times, um, increasing and decreasing. So the goal of this is to come up with a calibration e e uh, equation that will turn a voltage into a temperature because your customer who buys your system is going to get a voltage. They need to know the temperature. And then also the accuracy is what we're looking for from this. So we're going to use the deviation, kind of a conservative method that's taught in Chapter 2. So um, let's get started. So I need to put these numbers into MATLAB. So the easiest is to just um, take it as a, a matrix, copy it, Let's switch over to MATLAB here, um, and then I'm going to be using the, the history. So I'm going to create a, a variable named my data, and then if I click on it over here in the workspace, I can look at the, um, the variable editor, um, and I can paste that matrix right in from, from Excel. So this first column is the known temperature and the other columns are the voltages so I gotta parse those out um, but at least it's it started so I'm gonna close that it's a 16 by 6 16 rows 6 columns um, so then I take the first column and um, make it be the input so I'm calling it input C is my data colon comma 1 all the rows, first column is how you read that. And then the other columns are going to be the output. So uh, this is Celsius, and the other one will be in volts. So my data, all the rows, comma, columns two through the last column. So end is just however many columns there are. So this takes the, the these columns and saves them in a vector in a matrix that's the output in voltage. So now if you looked at the Excel um, video, we need to, you'll, you'll remember, we need to take all of this and uh, stream it into a single column so that we can curve fit. When we curve fit the data, we want to do all of this. So um, that's easy in, in Excel. I mean, <laughs> it's in, in Excel, we had to copy and paste. Um, in um, in MATLAB, we can do it all, all in one. So, um, if, if I want to copy the the first column over for all five cycles, um, this does that. So um, now I have input C for Celsius underscore vec for vector um, is input C input C input C five times semicolons in between. So they just get stacked on each other. Um, to make the matrix into a single column is even easier. Um, we just use this command, output v underscore vec. So this is a vector output v, and the single colon in parentheses um, takes it column by column and makes a single column. So if you look over here in the workspace, um, output v was 16 rows by 5 columns. Output V, the vector is 80 rows and one column. And we have input C vector that's 80 rows by one column. So uh, two columns that we can do. Um, so if we graph those, um, we get our figure one plot, um, the input on the X and the output on the Y. Um, and we get something that looks like this. So it looks about right. So scatter in the data. Uh, this is input 
uh, and this is output in volts, input in degrees. So um, for this, the next thing we have to do is to curve fit. And so there are some graphical tools in, in MATLAB to curve fit it. I like to use the, the old fashioned command. So um, polyfit is the command. So P is polyfit, and you just give it the, the X data and the Y data and the order of the polynomial. So for a line, it's a first order polynomial. Um, and you give it those numbers, and it comes out with the two uh, coefficients of the polynomial. So 0 0.678, 0678 times x plus 0.8819. And if you watch the Excel, it got the same number, so that's good. Um, so these are the coefficients, and these are the numbers you're going to give to your customer as the, um, the equation given a temperature solves for the voltage. So you have to invert it for your customer's use. But this is the traditional calibration format. Anyway, we um, we want to calculate we, to use this. It's this first coefficient p1 times x plus p2, um, and you can see if we if we want to calculate the curve fit, um, we can use these uh, here. So output underscore fit. So that's in volts, and it's the 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 points on the line, the curve fit line is this output fit. P1, that's this, times the temperature plus P2, the offset. And we get 80 by 1 uh, for this. All right, so now we can make the calibration plot with the curve fit. So this plots um, the input temperatures versus the measurements as pluses and the input temperatures versus the curve fit as the, the dashed line. All of the, the dashes are a little too small to see. Um, that's what we have. So this is the, the curve fit line that we want. Um, we could do So there's a good calibration plot. We could do grid on. Make it look really good. Something like that. So I would say that's a good outcome for the calibration plot. And we've got the calibration equation. And so that's the first part that your, your customer is going to need. So the next thing to do is to find the accuracy. And so to find the accuracy, we need to calculate the deviation, which is the distance from each of these measurements from the corresponding point on the calibration curve. So um, the calibration curve should go roughly through the middle because it's a best fit line, but there'll be some above and some below. So we calculate the deviation for every point. So we'll have 80 of them. And we just subtract them. So deviation is this output, the measurement, minus the fit. That's the definition of deviation. Um, and then we can make our deviation plot. So um, we plot the temperatures versus deviation as pluses. Um, we get we get this same plot. Now uh, this one, sh the the maximum and the minimum of the deviations are what we're using now as an estimate. It's a conservative estimate for the overall accuracy of the system. And we can divide them by the span. So um, we, we want to add these lines to the top. So what we do is we make a, a set of data with an x of 0, and an x of 40, and a y of the maximum value, and an x of 0, and an x of 40, and a y of the minimum value. So we make up some, some extra data, and in MATLAB you can do it all in the plot. So we're still plotting the, the deviation as pluses, and then we've got an x value of 0 and 40, and so 0 max and 40 max gives us this one. Um, and if we tack on the minimum, 0, 40, max, max, 
because red dashed 0, 40, min, min is red dashed. So we've got the three lines coming together all on this plot now, uh, which is right here. So there's the, the deviation plot with the dashed lines that we, we need to see. And that's the deviation plot. So those that would go along with our, if we sell our system, that goes along with it as proof of the kind of accuracy you can you can get. So those are the, the two plots, the calibration plot and the deviation plot. Um, the last thing is to deliver to our customer the, the way to use the system. So um, in, in MATLAB, there are ways to deliver things. So I'm going to use the printf command here. So this is uh, something you could copy and paste into your report. Um, fprintf takes the, the quoted strings. Um, percent %f is a placeholder, so percent %f is going to get replaced by the first element of p. Um, the second percent %f is going to get replaced by the second element of p. So it's printing those two things out. So that's the calibration equation. Of course, your customer would have to use algebra to solve for c in terms of v, or maybe you should do that for them. But that's that's the natural form of the calibration equation right there. For the accuracy, we need to calculate the span. So the span of the output is the maximum of the measurements minus the minimum of the measurements. So this is in volts. Uh, the output span is 2.9393 volts. Um, and then the, the, the largest accuracy value is the maximum of the deviation. So here's max of deviation. So 0.1678, we saw that on the plot. There was a line through that value. Um, the minimum is the minimum of the deviation. So that's the minimum accuracy. And these are in volts. So normally we change them to a percent of the output span so we can uh, get rid of the units. And so uh, this print statement would do that for us. So this, this printf took me a couple of tries, as you can see, um, to get the percent sign. So the accuracy is plus 0.57% and minus 0.57%. So pretty symmetric, but there's always an upper and a lower bound when we do it this way. Um, sometimes it's nice to see it in volts. So this is the, the AC plus and the AC min um, values directly in volts that were divided by the span. So you can see the way this print statement works. It prints out the text. Um, this percent %f gets replaced by that, ACC plus over span. Percent percent prints out the percent sign. Um, this percent %f is AC min divided by span. And again, percent percent gives us the single percent. Um, and plus percent %f is ACC plus, and this percent %f is ACC min. So you don't have to do it that way. Um, you're going to put it in your report one way or the other, so you could just type it in yourself um, rather than have MATLAB type it out, but that's, that's one thing you could do. So this uh, takes it all the way. We've got the calibration equation up here. It's the your customer can't use the system unless they have this equation. Um, the accuracy is the reason for your customer to buy the system, so you want to give that. Um, and the calibration plot uh, and the deviation plot. So those that's the, the basis. You can do more uh, error component estimation, seems like repeatability and hysteresis and uh, all of those things that are in, in that same part of chapter two. Um, but this is the, the first two steps that you have to do to get any kind of usefulness out of your calibration. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions, and I hope that helped, and I will see you down the line.